Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the live chat here on Board Archive. Hanging up, out guys? with Kevin today. Yo. And uh, yeah, we're going to be on here for about an hour, trying to answer as many questions as we can for you guys. Anything snowboard related, go ahead, start dropping those questions, whether it's gear, tips, travel advice. And uh, also let us know where you're joining us from. It's great to hear where you guys are at. And for anyone here now or who's going to be watching this replay, at about the 30 minute mark on this live chat, we're going to just take a few minutes and share some tips for traveling to Japan because uh, it's official, officially official, not that it wasn't before, but um, yeah, we're going to be going to Japan. We got a big crew mid-January, so really, really looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, I saw we just had about 50 people already waiting for the live chat today. Shout out to all of you guys for uh, getting on here early. I really appreciate it. Give some shout outs real quick. We got uh, Brian Car Carbone. Ooh, I'll answer this question. What was the first mountain you snowboarded at? What was your first mountain you ever snowboarded at? I know it was on the East Coast. Um, I'm just going to say the first mountain I snowboarded at was Whistler. There, okay. okay. <laughs> You're right. East Coast, those are hills. Those are hills. For me, it was um, it was actually Winter Park, Colorado. That was my first like big mountain trip. Nice. Um, yeah, that's always a fun question to answer. But um, Lots of people have been talking about Winter Park recently. Yeah, I haven't been there honestly since that trip. That was for I was on the snowboard team as a freshman in in college, and uh, we made it to nationals that year, and that was where we went. So it was pretty cool. Um, not because of me at all. We actually had some hard booters on the team doing giant slalom, and they carried the whole team. But anyways, uh, we got Reggie Red's cap on the chat. We got uh, Shant from Big Bear in SoCal. Anonymous K from Australia, Andrew Coates, what up guys, looks like there was some banter going on uh, before the live chat started here, uh, Miles Wilkin, Cat My Man Snow, uh, uh, Ramon Nunez, TJ, is a party wave your pow board for Japan, uh, yeah, that's just going to be my you know, my personal POW board for the season all over, including Japan. I, I am going to be bringing it to Japan. Um, but did you buy it because it's like a Japan powder board? Like, would you buy a powder board that wasn't going to be good for Japan? I would not, no. Yeah. <laughs> I, I definitely had Japan in mind when purchasing that snowboard, but looking nice. forward to riding it here in Whistler as well. And um, yeah, if you guys don't know, uh, I, what's your powder board? Yeah, I picked up the Orca. That's going to be my like, yeah, thinking of like what, what POW board would be good for Japan and then taking that across the rest of the season. So yeah, LibTech Orca for Japan, and I think it'll do the job very well and then should work out everywhere else too. Totally, yeah, and and you got the 159 this year, right? Versus you had the 153 last year? Yeah, I went bigger, so I went with the 59 because I just feel like for riding at higher speeds, for doing bigger drops, for um, the ability to like land something switch, I feel like having a bit of a longer board would suit me better. Um, totally. yeah, it's actually pretty similar to the party wave and like the way it looks like the shape, it's kind of like that volume shifted with the tail cut off kind of look. Yeah. They do have like a kind of similar outline look going on. What do you think the differences um, are? I feel like is the party wave, uh, softer or stiffer? Um, I feel like flex, they might be pretty similar actually. Okay. Um, yeah, I'd like to, to feel that out more side by side, maybe once we once the snow starts falling. But I yeah. know the party the, the party wave is full camber and uh, has the powder three BT, whereas the Orca they've got it's got the X C two, is that right? Yeah, C two X or whatever they want to call it. Yeah, with like, the, like so camber under your feet, rocker between, yeah. That more aggressive the most aggressive rocker camber profile they offer. And, um, and then the magnet traction, of course, that's a pretty big difference. But yeah, super stoked to try those out. And I'm curious to hear your thoughts on the 159 versus the 153 as well. So yeah, we'll have to swap the swap boards. What size party wave did you get? Um, so I got the 154 party wave. So that's nice. the, I think the biggest size they make. So yeah, should we should definitely do a comparison at some point. Nice. Yeah. Shout out to everyone dropping these questions here. So many comments so far. Thank you guys. And uh, also, uh, if you guys want to drop a super chat, it's a great way to support the channel. And uh, you know, you guys are our sponsors, so definitely appreciate it. And it'll make your question top priority as well. Um, but let's see who else is on here. We got Carrie Pierce. What's up, Carrie? And uh, Carrie's waiting for her Japan trip as well. Very nice. cool. 
uh, bottled in cork. What's up, dude? Adam, uh, Adam Searles. What's up, man? Philip Wynn. Uh, Constantine uh, asking, uh, what's up, guys? What's your setup this season? So, yeah, we just kind of talked about our um, our powder setup. Uh, and, yeah, Kevin's park board is actually right here behind us. Yeah, so it's the GNU headspace. Definitely, like, for me, I've been going through a lot of different like uh, GNU and LibTech boards and I landed on the headspace for my park board because of the, it's like camber dominant, it's got the magnet traction, ASIM uh, side cut. So like a bit more, um, yeah, I think a lot of the tools that I think will be good in the park. So I think uh, so far I've been loving it, been riding it in New Zealand. I think it made me honestly a better park rider. I just feel like more in control um, and it's got like that balance between it's like stiff enough for park, but it's also soft enough for like presses and think butters and stuff. So totally. Yeah, it's like a good balance. Yeah, it looks like you've been having a lot of fun on it so far. And uh, for me, I picked up the Battalion Evil Twin in a 154, had a lot of fun on it so far and uh, really looking forward to, to riding it this season, particularly on jumps. I really, really can't wait for the, the jump line to open up here on Blackcomb. Nice. And um, looks like the first super chat came through with no comment from Steven Mendoza, but appreciate the support, man. We'll keep an eye out for uh, any questions that you have in the chat here. And I saw we got uh, Narav and Yannick, Shred1904, in motion SLB on the chat. What's up, guys? They're actually going to be coming to Japan with us, so looking forward to seeing you guys soon. Um, Nils uh, Broschwitz, thoughts on putting the Union Falcor on a huck knife? Uh, that wouldn't be my first choice, man. Yeah, the Falcor is quite, quite stiff. Um, I think it's gonna, it's more binding than you need on the Huck knife. Um, yeah, I mean, if that's if that's what you already have, I'm sure it'll be okay. But um, I, I view the Huck knife as like more of like a jibby um, kind of park board. It's not super aggressive, so um, if you're looking to do tweaks and things like that, that might be a bit of a lot of binding. Yeah, it's like it's too much. I think it's too much binding for the board there. So you could just uh, get a softer binding, something that's less expensive. You can definitely get something just more mid range for sure. Um, like the Union Contact <clears throat> Pros. So if you want to stay stick with Union, it's just going to allow you to, uh, yeah, feel out the board more. I think the Felcors are too aggressive. I agree. And another super chat here from Adam Harms down from New Zealand. Good to see Adam. Uh, just showing. The love for the vids. My new Vulcan gear just arrived and now so keen for Whistler. Nice, man. Epic, dude. Yeah. Did did you say you ordered your, your gear from Evo, but you got it you got it in New Zealand somehow? That's pretty awesome. Cool. Well, maybe uh, yeah, maybe they deliver out there. Yeah, I don't know. I know that there there's some restrictions on certain gear shipping outside the States, but yeah, glad to hear that you were able to get that down there. And um, yeah. Yeah, what'd you get again? I can't remember what Adam got. I feel like he's, he said he got a, <clears throat> I think it was like a full stretch gore kit. Oh, I don't sweet. know. Uh, Good but call. yeah, which, it, yeah, just remind us again. I'd, I'd like to hear what you got. Which colors did you get? Yeah, let us know. Uh, all right, going to scroll down. So many questions here, guys. So we'll just uh, go down to the bottom here and see what's up. Another oh, super chat. Super chat from Care. Uh, hey, guys, any tips for snowboarding at night? Ah. Yeah, it's, it's, I haven't ridden at night in a while, but I, you Same. know, back in Colorado, Keystone offers some night riding, and um, the uh, opening day back at my home mountain in North Carolina just happened a couple of days ago, and they started off the season straight away, 9 a.m. to 10 p.m., so they got night riding right from the get-go. Nice. Maybe like some um, low-light, either no goggles or like very low-light goggles? Yep. I think, yeah, I've, I've, I usually rode no goggles, I think, a lot of the time back back east when i did the night riding um also it's most likely going to be icier if you're going uh riding at night so just be ready for that you know maybe make sure your board has some sharp edges or if, if you have a board with uh magna traction if you plan on doing a lot of night riding that can be helpful for sure it's probably going to be colder too yep. so definitely uh bring some extra layers like yeah i haven't ridden at night in over a year i think the last time was in in uh switzerland yeah, With that one night we did, it was definitely colder. It was harder to see, and it was icy. I was at Locks, <laughs> right? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yep. Locks, yeah, yeah, for sure. We got uh, Shred nineteen oh four saying clear lenses. 
Yeah, good, you good, got clear lenses. Good tip. Oh man, a bunch of super chats rolling in. Yes, thank you guys. Let's uh, hop onto the super chats here. All right, so uh, just owl uh, guys. Seriously, <laughs> uh, seriously, what do you think about step ons? I think uh, I have a good way to answer this question. I feel Let's, like um, I'm gonna do like I'm gonna do a another step ons video. Yeah. Yeah, I, we you, should. You want to do a step ons video with I, me? Yeah, let's do it. All right, so we can and then go we in, can just refer people to the video. We moving. can we can get into uh, like I know Comar's got step ons, right? So you can head in there, um, step on them, and uh, see what's up. Just <laughs> yeah, see. If, we if, should try them on snow too. But. Maybe, but we should definitely like we could do like a preview, uh, pre snow preview of step ons. There you go. I like it. I'm about it. But I feel like if you're gonna buy them before we get that video out. Like, ask yourself, like, what are your what are your priorities? If like the convenience is number one, then I think the step ons are probably for you. Like, if you're very concerned about convenience, but you do, I I think you you lose some performance. So it's something to consider. Definitely, yeah. And there actually, I think there are like three or four videos across both of our channels already about the step on. So check those out as well. We we have tried them out on snow. Yeah, my first ever binding was actually step ons. I feel like maybe yours were too. Not the that K2 I clickers. not that I owned, but the, yeah. yeah. And I actually I had a really bad experience with those. Did you Did you have a, a good experience? Mine or? were mine. My experience was fine, but I just didn't know. Like it was my very first one. I'm sure that the performance wasn't great. Yeah, I mean, I was like, I must have been 11 years old, um, <laughs> and it was a rental board. I remember it was at Catalucci in North Carolina, and I remember getting to the top of the mid station. So it was like a pretty decent way down to the bottom and they iced up and I on my back foot I could not get in to the binding and oh, I, no. I wasn't like at a point where I could one foot down so I I remember taking my front foot off and walking all the way down to the shop so they could like help me out did you cry I didn't cry <laughs> but I was I remember being bummed I was like yeah this this isn't fun right were they were they the k2 ones they were the k2 okay. clickers yeah, yeah they had like the two little metal things sticking out the side in the middle and you got to like try to yeah angle yeah. it in there it just got iced out but uh yeah all right just al so that that's a good super chat question yeah uh we got sean flanagan sup dudes any plans to ride any karua shapes totally yeah i'm I'd, i'm definitely gonna get on some karua shapes this year uh I know Bo is most likely going to be bringing a crew of shapes to Japan. I think um, David Jones might be as well. And, and Comor's uh, got a bunch of crew of shapes, I think, coming into Comor soon, so I, we could demo maybe. I hope so. I know they had some last year, so yeah, we'll keep our eyes peeled on you know any way we're able to to get our hands on some, and we'll try to test out some crew of shapes this year. The boards look awesome, uh, and I would love to try them out. Yeah, same. Uh, Henry, Henry Edmonston, uh, I'm going to be in Niseko in January as well. You should do a fan meetup. Awesome, Henry. Yeah, definitely. We, uh, yeah, once we get there and we get settled, maybe we could pick a day sort of halfway through the trip where we can meet up on the hill or something. That'd be fun. For sure. Yeah. We're going to have the live chats going through Japan as well. So definitely stay tuned. Uh, we'll try to, we'll make an announcement I'm sure on the live chats and follow us on Instagram <clears throat> as well. Uh, mine handles at, at board archive. And, snowboard uh, pro camp kevin's is that um, snowboard pro camp what uh so what day so we arrive our first day is the is it the 16th or the 31st is that yeah our... so the 16th i think is going to be like arrival day and then 17th will be first day on snow and then the 31st we leave 31st will be a travel day as well so okay. i think that leaves us with like 14 potential days of snowboarding okay cool so yeah it should be a pretty epic trip i think that's enough yeah I know we had a similar amount of time last year. I think we did 15 nights, 14 days. Yeah, I think. And it, I think we got like 10 or 11 days on snow. Yeah, we took a couple of days off to rest and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, dude, Mount Yote this year. Yeah, we got to summit it and and snowboard into a volcano. We got to get into the crater this year for sure. <laughs> it was super fun last year, but um, yeah, gonna it make it a priority to like. Very windy and icy when we were trying to do it last time. Yeah, it we'll, was tough. We'll get up there this year. But yeah, Henry, hope to see you in Japan, man. Glad to hear you're going to be in Niseko. And Carrie Pierce, uh, thank you for all that you do, uh, getting us through when there is no snow. Thanks, Carrie. Awesome. Thanks, Carrie. Yeah. I, I saw on your Instagram the picture of like a giant um, beetle 
One of those like beetles with like the horns and everything. I can't remember what it's called. Oh man, it's like a horn beetle. Gnarly Australian beetle. Yeah, it looked really intense. Get some snow soon. Hope. Uh, what what dates are you guys going to be in Japan, Carrie? I hope you guys uh, have a great trip this year. And we got Brian Carbon Carbone Carbone uh, with another super chat here. Uh, are you going to come out to Tahoe this year? Potentially, um, definitely would like to get down to California. I know Bear Mountain, I think, is probably the top resort um, for California. Uh, but yeah, potentially Tahoe as well. Yeah, we're just going to play like the weather. If uh, Tahoe area is getting tons of snow, we'll, we'll make the trip. It's like a short flight to get out there, so we can do it. Yeah, yeah for sure. I think, uh, yeah, that's kind of a, a priority for us this year is really just, you know, keeping our eyes on the, on the weather. We With snow forecasts, we're, we've got, like, all the resorts set up on there so we can see, you know, like, 12 days out, try to keep our eye on storms and yeah, see if we'll make our way down there at some point. But, yeah, shout out to everyone out in Tahoe. I saw, I think Mammoth already opened. They had, like, a small little setup going down. So, cool. yeah, resorts opening all over. All right, so Adam, following up with the the kit, he said, got the full Volcom stretch setup, resin gold pants, and the Volcom BL stretch jacket in a black, gold, and gray. Oh, nice. I know that one. That's yeah. a cool one. And Evo shipped it to me, but it got caught up in customs uh, for a while. Sent you guys a photo of it to see. Nice. Awesome, dude. Thanks, Adam. Dude, I was actually just looking at that same jacket last night, and I was debating, like, if I got that, would I get the resin gold pants with it or black pants or do it? I don't know. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can pull off the resin gold pants, but uh, <laughs> I'm stoked to hear that you went you went all in, dude. That that is a the jacket is awesome. That's what's up, dude. That's the same jacket you had last year. Right? It's the same jacket I had last year. Yep. And honestly, like I, if, I wanted to switch it up, but I if I want to go stretch gore, mm -hmm. so. Um, I feel like that's that's my number one choice at the moment. But yeah, 2020 gear list coming soon on board archive. Go check out Kevin's. He's already got the full setup if you haven't seen it already. Yeah, I got uh, got all my stuff. I think I'm I think I'm all set. The last piece was getting my uh oh these boots. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. Picking up the Vans boots, also the now bindings. So got everything is put together. I don't think I need anything else. Yeah. Legit, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah dude do you think uh so i know there's like a couple of kind of unofficial rail setups around whistler um yeah. i don't know if they're still there we've it's been raining the last few days but yeah have you heard anything about opening day or like do you do you think it'll be like a download um, situation but they're gonna get it open no matter what i have no idea yeah i think chris told me that they might open on the 22nd of november but I guess it'll just depend on can they open a run and get a run open. Right. It'll probably be the like gondola to the top and then one chairlift, I would imagine. That's what I, yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. That was kind of similar to last year. I remember they had like Emerald Chair going up on Whistler. And yeah, um, I heard that Whistler is all like they don't really make that much artificial snow on Whistler. Like it's mainly just natural snowfall for that to open. But yeah, we'll yeah it's supposed to be like, yeah, in the past we've had like, crazy record amount of snows in november but i think it's just been too warm or yeah it just hasn't come so yeah there has been some some snow up high um i don't know at all how much but we can kind of see that down here from the the village area when the clouds break but yeah stay tuned you guys you guys will know you'll see the video there will be an opening day video but i think the resorts in north carolina are open yeah, yeah, isn't that <laughs> dude? North Carolina, man, this is why I love App Terrain Park so much. They opened all man-made snow. Yeah, fourteen features on opening day, dude. Wow, it's it's so impressive. Sh yeah, shout out to everyone in North Carolina. Whistler, you um, gotta do it up at least. Have at least ten features, right? Or at least like two. <laughs> <laughs> what did they have one last year or none? Yeah, I don't. Ah, they had none. I feel like there was none on opening day. <laughs> Um, I can't remember. I think the first setup was maybe that hike park um, by Glacier Chair. There might have been no. There might have been something on Whistler before then. By but. talking about it, they're gonna like have none. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, we didn't jinx ourselves. <laughs> so maybe this that'll be like the catalyst to make sure they. I mean, people are gonna ride it if they build it. So, 
Um, no, I think they'll have none. They won't have any. <laughs> yeah, dude. They're not going to have anything set up. Dude, well, we'll see. They'll have the park fence and that's it. We'll find some like some like logs or something. Yeah. If there's if there's nothing, we'll find like a tree we can just like They definitely bonk. won't have any jumps set up. Definitely, yeah. No, I'm not expecting any jumps, but yeah, and there was no jumps in North Carolina either, but or in Colorado, honestly. I oh, think, that's true. Yeah. yeah. But Park Lane is open at Breck now. I know Eldora got some jumps. It's really cool to see Eldora out in Colorado being built by uh, Woodward Parks now. Uh, but anyways, back to some uh, some questions here. So Ton- care- Tons of super chats to get caught up on. So many. Yeah, thank you guys so much. We got Care. Uh, have you guys tried Montec slash Dope Snow Gear? Thoughts? I've never tried it, but I've been getting tons of ads for Montana. <laughs> what have you been, you been uh, <laughs> searching trendy snowboard gear? I, I don't know, man. Just there's like always popping up uh-huh. on, on whether like Instagram and Facebook. Just oh. yeah, it I've, does look cool. Yeah, I've seen some photos, but I don't know. I don't think you can buy it. I don't know where you could buy it in Canada, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I think you'd have to get it shipped over from Europe. I'm pretty sure it's like a European brand. Is it European? Okay. Um, I think at least all the ads are from like the Alps. Okay. So I'm I'm assuming it's probably. Maybe not probably european I, d- I didn't see anybody in it in colorado or anything no i've never seen anyone <laughs> in that t- well it's there it's a pretty distinctive like look they have going on it does look cool but yeah unfortunately we haven't tried it i bet people are riding it <clears throat> in the resorts in southern california could be it's been cool to see all the five gear come up from australia they seems like that's kind of been spreading to the states now oh is it yeah oh, i haven't seen that they've either. Got, they've got some good looking gear uh, <laughs> uh, just Al, I was kidding, guys. You answered that like a hundred times. Keep up the great work. Following since 2013, 2013 14, much love. Awesome. Thank I guess you. That was uh, the step on question. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's like a joke question. It is. Yeah. It's just trolling at this point. It's like when people ask us when we're, when we're, when are we snowboarding in Scotland? Yeah. Or what is your favorite resort of all time? <laughs> uh, but yeah. Parker Powder another classic the classic we probably questions. riddle off like five more if we wanted uh all right just al i appreciate the support man and um yeah i i do like the idea of doing a, a step on video though i think we should probably do that yeah i'm kind of curious because we were in them uh i guess two winters ago now so they've they must have kind of changed it a little bit slightly yeah maybe they've they've done something to kind of like tighten up the design or i don't yeah. know Usually, I, w- I would imagine with a new product after two years of testing on the market, they might change a couple of things. Um, all right, we got Jose Bortista. What's up, Jose? Hope to see you out in Japan maybe this year or sometime this season. Um, but yeah, we saw saw you out in Seco last year. Uh, Sweet L Stacker and Chuck will be there on the 19th to the 26th, speaking of. Nice. Uh, hopefully we'll bump into y'all dwcp uh definitely we should uh we should just organize something wait um, al stacker and chuck gonna be there too awesome yeah we should definitely try to just organize a meetup meet- where we can just like hang out get some ramen or something i think it's it's for sure 100 yeah, percent. we'll have to do that i want to get uh yeah get those guys in some get in a video yeah that'd be epic i'm yeah let's do it like like everybody but um yeah, we need to get El Stacker in a video too. That'd be awesome. <laughs> uh, Adam Harms following up. Uh, trust me, the resin gold pants are super sick, and I was able to size down because of the stretch, so it'll keep me a bit warmer, hopefully. Nice. Sick, man. Yeah, you you had tried the stretch gore pants um, for a few days last year, right? Did yeah, you? they were great. Yeah, the I had gold ones as well. I honestly, I, I thought they looked pretty dope with that blue jacket. Thanks. Yeah, they were uh, comfy. They were, yeah, no problems at all, really. Um, why did I stop wearing them? I don't know. I need, th- um, I think. I think because yeah. I got that multicolored jacket and the gold pants didn't really quite go. That would have been too much. There's like too many colors happening. Yeah. Um, but they were cool with like, yeah, like sort of like the gold pants with more of like a, a neutral colored jacket. It would have been cool. Like I like the idea of having that black and gray with the gold sleeves jacket. It's, it's different. Yeah, I think the the jacket looks great. I need to try it on with some gold pants. 
What about some Burton like AK stuff? Are you interested in that at all? Do they do stretch Gore-Tex? Or um, do you like not like the way that Burton fits? I think the the AK stuff fits pretty pretty good. Um, yeah, I'm not opposed to it. I'm I'm pretty. I definitely want to stick with stretch gore, um, but right now I've just I've really been gravitating towards the the Volcom stuff still. And like I did look at a few other brands and I, I debated switching, but I feel like I'm gonna end up end up on Volcom again. But we'll see. And I tried to go with like a different color this year too. Like I thought because last year you had like sort of red and yellow that you would probably get the opposite. And so I was like, I'm safe to go for yellow. So I don't know. Are you thinking of? You can get gold if you want to, but I'm just like thinking. That's do you have true. A, do you have a color you're leaning towards? Um, I want it. I kind of like uh, the blues this year. I was. I'd like to find a, a a blue kit, but um, yeah, it's still it's still up in there. You guys will just you guys will just have to see once the the 2020 gear video comes out. Um, all right. Still got some more super chats. Thank you guys. So Steven Mendoza asking if we ever plan to visit Eldora's Woodward Park. Uh, Buckhouse seemed pleasantly surprised by it. Nice. Yeah, I uh, I definitely would like to check it out for sure. Um, yeah, I think there's a, a good chance we'll be in Colorado uh, at least one or two more times at some point this season. So maybe take a day, maybe like the first day because Eldora is pretty close to Denver. Uh, maybe check that out. But yeah, they were they were the first ones to get jumps up in Colorado, so good on them. Cool. It look, looks fun for sure. Shout out to Jonathan Buckhouse as well. Yeah, Jonathan killing it out there. Yeah, it was good to see good to see everyone back in Colorado on this last trip. And Shant's coming through with a big super chat here. Uh, what's up, guys? Tuning in from SoCal. When are y'all coming down this way? I uh, would love to board with you guys. During the last live, I asked about buying a rock or a rocker or camber as the beginner and decided to go with the ripcord. What do you nice. think? Yeah, good choice. That was in my <clears throat> top five beginner boards. I feel like, yeah, it's, it's like meets all those criteria, like low price. Um, yeah, it's got some rocker in it. And yeah, it's, that, it's good. That soft flex. Yeah. Soft flex too. Yeah, man. Uh, I think, yeah, that sounds great. I think, uh, yeah, set up for a good season, man. And yeah. definitely, uh, have, do we do have plans to come down to SoCal at some point. So we'll, we'll keep everyone posted. And Yeah, it's probably going to we'll be like, there. maybe like March time. Yeah, that's what I was, yeah. Like once it's the the big mountain, like powder days are kind of winding down. Maybe yeah. Head down for some, some park riding down in SoCal. Yeah. Yeah, it should be great. Um, but yeah, your first board, it's kind of like the first board is just like to get the turns down, to get down skating, to practice rounding switch, to maybe do like a few beginner tricks. Um, and so like just like that inexpensive, flexible board with some rocker towards the nose and tail is like just going to be perfect. Definitely. Yeah, something that's like not going to – it's going to make it easy to – to try everything and, and let you like figure out like, Oh, this, I, I think this is more fun than that. Like I think carving is more fun than butter. So like I want yeah. to progress that way, or maybe you'll like, you know, side hits more than the other stuff and you want to start going towards park. Yeah. So I think, yeah. And if it's a cheap board too, it's like, if you like bang it up and if you don't take care of it and you just like, you know, you're hitting it on things and wh whatever you're doing with it, it's like, then it's like it's not that big of a deal because after a season or two on that kind of a board, then you're ready to like just step it up a little bit. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Some lift line damage is inevitable. Um, so, yeah, dude. Yeah. Lift line damage. That's probably where you're not going to damage it like riding or, you know, doing jumps or hitting trees. You're probably just going to damage it in the lift line. People <laughs> stepping on it, people kicking it, you kicking into other people, um, maybe, especially like if you're in southern california i feel like it's pretty busy there I or, think so yeah or, that's my impression so you might have some other new riders kind of just like stepping on it so a good i feel like yeah get one of those beginner in, intro type boards and you're you're set definitely man <clears throat> i wish i had a soft board when i started my board was like so stiff <laughs> Same. my first two boards were way too stiff i had yeah, yeah full camber <laughs> For my first board, it was a 149, like 12 years old. Yeah. <laughs> and then I got a Burton Custom X. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I bought it because I like the graphic, man. Yeah. I, I remember I was 14. I think my board, I think it was called like Visions or like Vision. 
And I think I actually saw like that, that same company in, when we were in Colorado. Somebody, that guy helped like with that beginner dude. Oh yeah, I, yeah that was awesome to see I that think, actually. I think he had like a vision. I think that was my first one. And I bought it from like a sports, like kind of like, you know, sport check kind of company. Did, did that guy have any idea who you were like helping him out with his uh, first dance? No, 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 That's... no, yeah. I like jumped in and helped somebody uh, get out of the trees as a beginner. Yeah, so, we were like <laughs> filming a video on the side of the run and this dude was just struggling and Kevin yeah. like ran up and like helped him personally. It was, it was pretty rad. I used to do that for a living. Just, uh, <laughs> yeah, man. It all came back very natural. It was good to see. All right, we got a few more super chats here. So Adam Harms, just killing it with the super chats today, Adam. Uh, Cardona just got like 10 centimeters of snow and it's November. Is it still open? No, it's not open. Can't can be. you, can you hike? Can you, I guess you can. That's enough snow to do something, you know? Yeah. Are you hiking? What's going on? Yeah. In... Are you getting out there? I miss Wanaka. Wanaka is like so good. I want to spend like, I want to live in Wanaka. Is Adam, are, is Adam year round in Wanaka? I yeah. Think so yeah. Yeah. Oh man. That's, that's awesome. I miss that disc golf course too. That was, that was a highlight for me. Um, old man shredder. What's up, Martin? Uh, what's up boys got stuck on steep and, and missed the beginning i made some vegan pulled oomph and a short video on a backyard setup shout out to all the homies nice man yeah what is uh what's pulled uh oomph what is that i was is gonna it, ask you is it like you a tofu is it like a to pulled tofu type thing uh oh maybe it's um what's that uh oh you can it's like the oh like jackfruit, jackfruit kind of stuff are you like going vegan or are you just kind of like, or do you just make some vegan dishes? That'd be cool to like get, yeah, hear from you what you think about it, how you feel. Yeah, that's an interesting one. And yeah, playing steep as well. And I actually, I saw that pop up on my feed, Martin. So yeah, if you guys don't know, Martin has a YouTube channel. Um, yeah, check out Old his Man latest Shredder. video. Old Man Shredder. Uh, Martin too, check out, uh, I don't know if you've seen this, but there's a really cool like vegan athlete uh, documentary. It's called Game Changers. And it's a pretty cool one. If they follow like um, professional fighters, like professional like um, track and field stars, like a football team, and they all like are doing like the plant based diet thing, and it's it's pretty cool. I would I wonder if you like saw it or definitely check it out if you can because yeah, I appreciate it. I thought it was pretty neat. Yeah, it's good. All right, uh, Wilberly with the super chat. Uh, the vids are helping with snowboard withdrawals. Hope our Washington. Uh, Washington resorts open before mid-December. Hashtag ramen fund. Sweet. Thanks, Wilberly. Yeah, man. I hope Washington opens up soon. Uh, mm -hmm. Baker's another place I'm keeping my eye on heavy this year. I really, really want to get yeah. down there. Hope like a massive storm rolls through and it's just like, all right, we're going to Baker. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, I want to go down to Washington for sure. Still never and boarded in Washington. I know. Um, and man, now I'm hungry. Ramen fund. I know. Are you hungry? I'm, I'm down to get food after this. <laughs> Um, I do have dinner with my landlord at seven though. So maybe, maybe a snack. Oh, weird. Yeah. <laughs> with your landlord, just you and your landlord? Well, me, me and Andreas and, okay. uh, and well, there's, they're like an older couple. They're really nice, okay. but they just, it's just like to get to know them. I don't know. They're oh, nice. super nice people. Cool. They've been, been in Whistler since the seventies, built the house that they themselves. Um, that you and Andreas live in. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's pretty rad. Yeah. Living with Andreas this year. It's been great so far. Down the road from Chris. Yeah, just right down the hill from Chris. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, all right, Riley Tong. Uh, hey, guys, thoughts on Flux Bindings and Ride Fuse? Uh, thanks for the super chat, Riley. Uh, have you ever ridden Flux Bindings? No, never, no. I rode Flux many years ago back in North Carolina, and I thought they were they were solid. But um, Nice. Yeah, I don't have any strong opinions about Flux. Um, and the Ride Fuse, that's like my go to boot right now i actually just did a, a comprehensive review on it it's the last video on the channel so go check that out and you'll get all the details man nice um but yeah the fuse um good all-arounder lots of tech solid solid boot man um <laughs> all right now shant following up uh now i'm worried about people stepping on and scratching up my rip oh no Thanks, guys Dude, it's okay. It's okay. You know, sticker it up. It's like that top sheet. You might get a little top sheet damage or some scratches, but I don't think anything's going to happen. Yeah. At least in the lift line that's going to like 
break your board. No, you can definitely, honestly, I was just kind of saying that for fun, but you can, you can keep it in good shape. I would say the thing that, the thing that probably roughs your, your board up the most is like how you store it. So like when you're done at the end of the day, make sure it's dry. Don't let like any water like pool, say like at the bottom of it. Um, and like store it someplace like safe. Not, you're not putting anything on it. Um, also like throwing it, putting in, putting, putting it into your car, make sure there's not like, uh, I don't know, a bunch of things rattling around on top of it too. Just, that's the, probably the most common way people get their boards scratched. Yeah. I was going to say if you're traveling with friends and maybe you're like stacking some boards on top of each other for like just efficiency for packing, try to put something mm -hmm. in between. I always have yeah. like a layer of cardboard. Cause I find that's, that's a pretty much surefire way to scratch up the top sheet, but yeah, yeah, dude, you'll be, you'll be fine. You'll be good. Sorry for scaring you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Alex with the 1,000 yen super chat. That's awesome. Nice. How much is that in dollars? I think that's about 10 bucks. Nice. Yeah. Sweet. It's just, it's cool to see <laughs> yen come through. Yeah. Cause we, when we booked our place in Japan too, how much was it? Like uh, 150,000 yen? Uh, no, I think it was like one. 1. 1.5 million yen? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Something like that. It was between it, eight of us. Between eight of us for fifteen days, it's actually um, not as much as it sounds. But yeah, definitely yeah. not, not super cheap, but worth it. We got our, our own place. Like eight people are gonna fit in there. We got like kitchen deck, views of Mount Yote. It's, it's gonna be rad. Yeah. Um, so Alex says, "Hey guys, do you guys do any stretching or yoga?" I'm not very flexible, so if you have any recommendations, that would be awesome. Uh, we'll give you guys a wave if I see you out here in Japan. Sweet. Definitely. Hope to see you out there, Alex. Um, I don't do a bunch of yoga. I, I know like a couple of like basic flows or whatever it's called um, that sometimes I'll do, but I try to stretch every day. Um, just kind of like basic static stretches. Yeah, I think like the thing I like to do the most is actually... Like instead of sitting, say like on, on the couch or like um, doing a lot of sitting like while watching TV or I don't really watch too much TV, but um, if I do sit, I think it's best to like sit on the ground. Uh, I try to do that as much as possible and then like kind of have your like legs in different positions just being like on the ground and, and kind of like I think that helps to like work your hips and like hamstrings. You can put one leg out, one leg in, whatever you, you need, need to do. Uh, but being on the ground a lot I think is great for like your flexibility, your knees, your ankles, your hips, all that kind of stuff, lower back. Um, I think it's like sitting, like what me and TJ are doing now is like what really like makes us stiff. So yeah, if you can do more things on the ground, I think that's good. And then uh, yeah, flexibility in your upper body is good as well. So I, I, you can't really like sit on your, on your hands, but maybe like just do some, a few different things, look online. Just to get your shoulders more flexible and stuff like that and like chest and all that. Yeah, I think if you're just getting into it, like there's tons of variations of stretches to get the different um, parts of your body out there. So just, you know, look up some videos and try it out and you'll find like maybe like five or ten that you really like. Yeah. Um, and you can just kind of stick to that. And uh, yeah, definitely super helpful and definitely very important for snowboarding. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, so I wanted to catch up on all the super chats before we jumped into the Japan tips. So we're a little bit late, uh, but yeah, I just wanted to take a few minutes and um, kind of talk about a few things you could look out for if you're planning to travel to Japan for a snowboard trip. Um, just kind of some general things. This, these could apply for like any snowboard trip too. Um, yeah. Or could they? Uh, potentially. I, I mean, I don't know. I'm sure we'll say different <laughs> things, I hope. Um, but yeah, some of the stuff I'm sure will apply to just general snowboard trips, but I think, um, the first one, uh, for Japan that I, I want to bring up is if you're, if you're traveling with a group, um, you know, maybe you don't all want to get SIM cards for your phone. Um, you can get what's called a pocket Wi-Fi. We had that last year. It worked really, really well. We were doing like live chats um, on the hill. And like, I think Kevin did one where we were, he was like in the car and then like getting ready and going up the gondola. Um, oh, yeah. Solid service on the pocket Wi-Fi and it can be shared, you know, between several people. So that's a pretty cool little with the pocket of pick up with the pocket wi-fi though you have to like actually like book it ahead of time so you have to like reserve it you can't just like i don't think you can just show up and get one you, you, you have to like reserve it 
like like Bo reserved. Bo, Bo, yeah, Bo picked up the pocket yeah. Wi-Fi last year, so I actually wasn't sure about that detail. But yeah, it's anything you can do in advance is is a good idea. And then I think other countries too, like most countries, like when we go to New Zealand or Australia, we just get like a SIM card at the airport, and that way you stick that in your phone and avoid those like long distance roaming charges. Oh yeah, critical. And like especially New Zealand and Australia, it's surprisingly affordable, like way yeah. more so than the states or Canada for getting um getting cell phone service while you're there. So yep. yeah, that's huge. Um, Internet is like the most important thing. Yeah, I think you know, for <laughs> us, we're doing the live chats, we're uploading videos, we're trying to do Instagram stories, Instagram posts, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's, it's critical. It's hard to like, yeah, it's it's hard to when you go on a trip to then like disconnect. Well, it's easier, I guess, to like not be on your phone as much, but I feel like it's such like you're you're so intertwined with your life with like checking your emails or like, talking to people on like WhatsApp or whatever. I was, so. I was going to say, yeah, yeah, even just talking to people within your group, you know, you're able to, yeah. if you get separated, you have an easy way to communicate with each other and not just like, yeah. if we get separated, meet at the bottom at, oh, 200 hours or whatever. Yeah. That's two in the morning, but um, yeah. Um, That's I, a good one. Yeah. Pocket Wi-Fi. I think um, another one for Japan is um, typically... You know, whether you're going to the South Island or the North Island, you're going to be flying into Tokyo. And there's actually two different airports in Tokyo. There's Narita yeah. and and Haneda. And they're actually pretty far apart. Like, I think it's an over an hour bus ride um, to get from one to the other. Um, so make sure that everyone in your group is flying into the same airport. It's pretty easy to get that confused. Um, yeah, last year I messed up. I, like, flew into one, the Narita, and then... My next flight was out of the other airport. And so like I wasn't gonna have enough time to catch it. So I had to like run around, change my flight on the spot. I think it cost me like a hundred dollars, which is like a pain in, in the butt. But uh yeah, there was nothing I could do. And I don't know why that happened. I, I'm pretty sure I like try to double check, but yeah, definitely make sure that you're flying in and if you're transferring out of the same airport, because uh they can trick you with that. Even if you're on the same airline, they're just like Oh yeah, your connecting flight is in an airport an hour and a half away. Yeah, and like you might, you, you know, it's a very easy detail to overlook. So I think yeah, that's pretty critical. Um, also, um, a mistake I made last year is uh, if you are going to be catching a connecting flight from Tokyo to say fly up to Sapporo, if you're going to be snowboarding in Niseko, book all of your flights on the same itinerary. Don't book your Tokyo flight and then do a separate booking for your transfer to from Tokyo to the North Island. Or if you do, be very, very careful and make sure you know, you're accounting for a potential delayed flight. That's what happened to me. I flew in Air Canada and then had a Japan Airlines flight to the North Island. Uh, my Air Canada flight was delayed and I missed my flight, had to stay the night in Tokyo, had to buy a new plane ticket and it was just a very stressful situation. So yeah, well, is there a third trip there? So I think it, the flights will run much smoother. I'm feeling, hopefully. yeah, I'm feeling confident, man. Um, <laughs> what else? Yeah, uh, I so I was kind of caught by surprise with how cold it was in Niseko last year. Yeah, it's definitely like it's cold and stormy enough in Niseko that you could you could be in trouble if you got stuck outside. Like you could, yeah, definitely. Like know where you're going outside. Bring lots of like, yeah. Bring more clothes than you need. I think to yeah. Japan, unless you're already living in like an extremely cold climate. But like it's like pretty moderate here in Whistler. So what? Yeah, Japan can c catch you off guard with the cold. Definitely, you know. Yeah, be ready for those super super cold days on the hill. Um, Base layers, maybe like a heavier face mask and liners for your mitts. Whatever you need to do. Yep, liners for the gloves. I actually, yeah, I'm, I'm bringing. The, uh, the oven mitts, like the warmest gloves that I, I have. Um, yeah. Nice. Yeah, lots of layers. Um, anything else gear-wise um, coming to your mind? No, but uh, I was going to say Google Translate is great. If you're like buying food, looking at menus, reading like train schedules, like uh, Google Translate on your phone, where you can just like hold your phone up to like what, like maybe a, a product that you're going to buy and it like translate all, this, all the Japanese into English. That's like super helpful. Totally, yeah. It's it's pretty cool too to like see the like Japanese uh, symbols like translate into English in real time with the app. So yeah, that's super helpful. Um, <clears throat> also, I think gear wise um, for your board, like either bring 
a board that's like made for deep, deep powder, like 40 mm -hmm. centimeters plus, or, um, you know, be prepared to, to rent one for a day or two. If you get a couple of really deep days, I think that, yeah. that will dramatically improve your experience as well. Yeah. Our friend Brent who came out with us, he, uh, he had just kind of like a, um, I guess it was just like an all mountain freestyle board. It was, I think it was the GNU rider's choice. Yeah. And I think so. he switched it up like a couple of days and got a powder specific board. And he was like, he noticed a huge difference and having, having like a powder board out there Definitely. just way easier. I feel like his enjoyment level went like way through the roof too. Yeah. Cause I think the first couple of days he was maybe feeling like he was, I don't know about feeling like he was lagging behind or, or whatever it was, but he wasn't getting like the, the true Japao experience until he got on like a pure powder board. And then he was just like, I think he was like, yeah, like yelling and screaming. Yeah, and I mean, you could, time. it was like visibly more stoked for yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And then I think maybe uh, last thing uh, is to the accommodation. I think if you want to have the most variety and you're like pretty sure on the dates you're going to be able to go, I think that would be the thing to book um, sooner, like before the yeah. flights, because the flights are actually, there's tons of flights out to Japan. And I don't think yep. the, the uh, prices fluctuate too dramatically. Um, but yeah, just to, to give yourself the best options. Yeah. Also, I would say one last thing is, uh, don't, don't plan on buying too much snowboard gear in Japan because it's, it's pretty expensive there. It's like more expensive than North America for gear. So I would get your gear ahead of time if you can. And, um, I think that's that's a good way to save money. Yeah, sick. So there's a few t uh, tips for traveling to Japan. If any of you guys are looking to doing that in the future, uh, hope that helps you out. And let us know if you have any other Japan-specific questions that maybe we didn't cover. But uh, yeah, just wanted to take a moment, talk about that. Nice. Let's see if we got any more. Uh, let's see what's going on in the chat. Oh, well, we got one super chat that came in while we were talking there uh, from Constantine. Uh, board for 80% carving and 20% powder, uh, LibTech TRS. Um, yeah, I think the TRS is all right. I think if you're really looking at carving, though, there might be some better options. Um, yeah, honestly, man, 80% carving and 20% powder. That's an interesting combo there. I think that honestly, if you are going to be getting a carving board, most most of the carving boards are going to do pretty well in powder as well, um, unless you go for like the Napton Twin or something like very you know specific that's like still twin tipped. But um, yeah, directional boards are super fun for carving. Um, it's going to be wide, which will help float in the powder. Usually, you know there you might find a little bit of a taper um, and setback and a lot of those features that you'll want for powder anyway. Um, Does the yeah. uh, TRS have a taper? The TRS is actually a directional twin, so yeah, it doesn't it doesn't have a taper or, okay. or a setback. It just has that little bit longer nose, yeah, um, than tail. So I yeah, would, I guess that that could be a good option. I would try to get. I'd maybe go look at a yeah a board with a bit of a taper. Um, uh, the e jack knife has a taper, right? Maybe a little. Yeah, the e jack taper. knife could be good. I mean, I, I just want to throw out the orca. I know, like it's it's yeah i think that's a great great board for that as well um could be a good carver yeah the, and i think um you know like the, the brands like united shapes uh karua shapes um gentem stick any of those more kind of like they're almost like carving inspired across the the field so just most of those boards are going to be good um but yeah i think just as a general general things to look out for i think um, yeah, width and then, you know, a little bit of taper, a little bit of those directional features as well. Thanks for the support, Constantine. And old man Shredder asking, what is the largest version of the Orca? I think it's uh, 159, I believe. I, yeah. So I think I've got the biggest one. I think so. Yeah. I know that the, there's some other sizes kind of like they're dropping a 156 if they haven't already. Um, some of the in-between sizes, but I don't know if they're going to go bigger than 159. Yeah, so it's cool. They have like a big uh, big range of sizes for this year. Yeah. Yeah, year of the Orca. <laughs> the Orca pods. Uh, Matthew Sweeney with the super chat, just saying hashtag Japow Fund. Nice. Thanks, man. Yeah, dude, it's going to be so much fun, like such a heavy crew. So many videos are going to be coming out. It's going to be great, man. Thank you for the support. David Jones is going to be out there. His channel is 
like blowing up at the moment with the the um the fingerboard videos yeah um which is crazy i like i feel like his channel is like since he like yeah he got he got injured and then over the summer he like discovered this like new creative way to make videos and yeah. it's like crushing it with I, it i he's just like he's very yeah he's very good at at what he does for sure he makes very <laughs> interesting videos like honestly i think my favorite part of like his new style of the videos is the crazy intros oh yeah that he does like he had yeah. one where it was like he was like snake charming and then had like a machine gun yeah, like all made cool. out of paper and added sound effects and stuff but yeah i guess real quick actually let's just shout out everyone that's coming on the japan trip so kevin of course go check out snowboard pro camp if you're not subscribed already shout out to me <laughs> yeah you know you're right here you're here you're helping with the live chat dude you're of course you're gonna be the first shout out shout out to tj he's coming <laughs> um shout out david jones check out his channel we got uh chris ayers andreas schubert uh Bo, Bo pollard they all have channels go check those guys out and then we got narav and yannick um coming as well maybe they'll make channels they they might as well honestly um yeah but yeah yeah really looking forward to the japan trip guys man you're re you got your mind on japan at the moment hey i mean that is the theme of, that, <laughs> that's the theme of the uh oh is the it? live chat oh, okay cool. it's, it's in the title oh it is okay i didn't know that <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that might explain why there's so many Japan questions um all right cool so we got 140 people do on we, the, do we get that super chat i think so let me double check here Oh, oh wow. wow! Damn. Uh, well, that one just came in. Uh, Derek Warden, thank you so much for the support, man. Really, really appreciate it. And Derek is saying, don't forget if you can get a travel credit card. With some cards, you can get free travel insurance, car insurance on rentals, airport lounge access, hotel perks, airline credits, all kinds of perks and discounts. Yep. Uh, plus no exchange fee with purchasing internationally have fun in japan nice good tip there huge tip actually yeah i'm i i'm really glad you brought that up that that's something that yeah i kind of discovered over the last couple of years with all the traveling that we've been doing um i have a travel card it doesn't have lounge access i'm looking at maybe getting one that does but that's kind of a I don't know, not necessarily a top priority, but I think the biggest one for me um, out of that is not having any international exchange rate charges. So like some cards, you'll just, and every purchase you make, they automatically hit you with like a 3% charge on top of that. Um, so yeah, with Capital One, well, I'm not going to name specific cards, but yeah, that's, <laughs> that is that is huge, man. Yeah, it's cool. If you can get points too, like that's, uh, I feel like with putting trips and like expenses out in points and then get free flights once in a while. It's yeah. Cool. You know, like double points on travel purchases on some cards. Also, yeah, another big one with my card is, um, the car insurance. So if you rent a car, you don't have to like pay whatever, six, $10 a day for their insurance It's just covered, um, with your credit card. So that can actually, you know, it might that in itself. And plus the fees is probably worth, you know, whatever the fee is, if you have to pay like $100 for the year for the card, if you're going to use it, even on one trip, that might pay for it. So, yeah. But don't go into debt, kids. Pay off your insurance or your 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 credit cards. Yeah. Your balance. Keep your balance at zero. If you got to you, you got to be responsible with it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good. Good call out there. I'm going to Japan. It's all on the credit card. I, I don't have points. To, I don't have to pay for it for another year. But yeah, knowing yeah, do uh, if you do do those trips, it's good to have like all those bases covered. You might as well. Yeah. Uh, Jared Crow, thinking of going for a LibTech Mayhem for Japan this year. Think it will nice. go okay in the deep. Sick man. Yeah, that. So that board is uh, my friend Ryan was riding it out in Colorado. I did like a a carving video with Ryan Napton and uh, Bo and my friend Ryan was or his name's Ryan Toth. Um, and yeah, it looks like a ripper, dude. He was like r really having fun carving with it. It looked like a lot of fun. And I nice. am, wouldn't be, I would expect it to do very well in the deep stuff. So yeah, LibTech Mayhem. I think, I think you'll be all good, dude. Yeah, no, that's a really fun looking board for sure. 
And it uh, looks like Jared doubled up on his question, perhaps, probably by mistake. But um, yeah, Jared, thank you, man. I appreciate it. And I hope you enjoy the mayhem. Yeah, that like, uh, is that the board too that uh, a season or two back had like, just was like all flames? I, I don't know. Okay. Man. I'm not, I'm not, I don't, th- it's not like one of the highly marketed boards on LibTech. I feel like you really got to look into the line to find it. But yeah, it looks really fun, really fat, looks like really quick turner through like trees and all those things. Very, I think it's a very floatable board. Totally. You, you'll just be like flying past all your friends on that board. And uh, just as long as you can get a, I'm sure this is not a problem, but as long as it'll fit into your board bag, you're good. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, get some, I think, stiffer bindings with it too to like get that control. And yeah, that's a, that's a really fun one. Did you get the one with all the flames on it or is it like a newer version? I'm trying to, th- I can't picture the top sheet right now, but. Yeah, I actually, I looked it up recently, but I can't remember oh, cool. what the top sheet looked like. I think it was kind of a, like, I don't want to say it wasn't anything super flashy. Okay. <clears throat> but it was yeah, as flashy as just a board covered in flames. It wasn't a board covered in flames. Okay. Um, not this year, at least. Nice. But yeah, man. I think you'll be good you'll board. be good. Yeah, good good to hear all these people going to Japan, man. It's um definitely one of my all time favorite places in the world to go snowboarding and I'm I'm stoked to get out there again soon as well. I'm stoked to go just snowboarding just anywhere <laughs> just really in for general. Ev- for everyone going snowboarding for, there's probably a lot of people on here just going uh soon as well. Like I feel yeah, all those East Coast resorts opening up, Colorado um tahoe is like there's a few places open so california yeah i think um, like midwest resorts are opening as well yeah but um nothing here yet <laughs> not yet it'll but, happen soon yeah it's coming we just you know gotta be patient it'll be okay norway i think i saw some guys riding powder in norway so it's pretty crazy i saw austria has like a ton of snow right now i oh, saw really? like a pretty crazy video where like oh, people, yeah. people are already getting in the uh, back country and wow. like tons and tons of snow crazy yeah uh all right we've got l stacker on the chat what's up man and saying he's going <laughs> to japan with jose and chuck nice yeah dude i hope you guys have an epic trip and i'm i'm sure we'll see you guys out there l stacker we'll see you there <laughs> um we got jippy line saying hi guys what do you think about the k2 cool bean is it only for powder um yeah so the k2 cool bean it's a it's a pretty interesting shape i actually it's i've actually never ridden that board i've ridden the party platter which is like kind of similar um but i think that i would kind of group that board in with boards like the war pig the party platter uh, the slush slasher, all that kind of stuff where, um, you know, they're, they're good for carving. They are going to be good in powder, but it's just kind of like a feel good board that you can just kind of ride any day and just not take it super serious and just have a good time on it. Yeah. So cruising groomers and, and powder. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Or yeah. If you're going summer boarding, great slush boards as well. So, um, all right. So we got Daniel coming through with a super chat. Uh, how's the 2020 Arbor Brian Noguchi Pro Camber for my all mountain slash powder board? Uh, can you keep a centered stance for those powder days with Union Force bindings? Nice, nice man. Uh, so yeah, the Noguchi Pro. I haven't ridden the t- 2020, but um, I actually owned that board for a season. Um, a couple, not the season before last. Um, and I really enjoyed it, man. Really, really fun board. It's a directional twin. It's got a, a slight taper. Um, I believe the stance is centered in the side cut, and then it's got the kind of directional shape, so longer nose than tail. Um, but yeah, I think it's a great all-mountain board, and I think it's, it'll be fine in the powder, too. I mean, you see what Brian Aguchi does with it, and um, he seems to and really enjoy it in the powder. I don't think it's going to like be epic float, but it definitely will get the job done. Can you keep a centered stance? Yeah, you can keep, I mean, if you want to do like, you know, spins off natural features where you're landing switch, I would say, yeah, keep that stance centered. What about just riding powder? For just straight riding powder, <laughs> I, I would uh, I would set the stance back, man. I, I think that it, you will, you know, you will feel it in your back leg if you don't. It's not super directional, but um, yeah, it depends what you want to do. I would probably set the stance back. 
All right. Uh, Donald, do you know anything about elevated surf craft, surf craft boards? I've, I met the dudes. We met the dudes at Mount Hood. Um, I, think, I don't think I met them. Uh, a couple of seasons ago. Oh, did I? Um, yeah, we got stickers from them. It was like a really brief meeting. Okay, um, yeah. They, they were like in the lodge one morning. Oh, yeah, um, I remember I now, yeah. some stickers or something. Yep. Yeah, um, yeah, they got some really cool. Like that's another another brand. If you're looking for those surfy carving powder shapes, that that's kind of what they specialize in. So yeah, and they, I've been following them on Instagram for a few years, and the, their power boards look really fun. Yeah, for sure. Like a uh, small company, I, I can't remember where they're made, but I feel like it's around Oregon, maybe. Yeah, I think somewhere somewhere around there, maybe like P and W. Um, but yeah, they, what's they, a PNW? P- Pacific Northwest, man. Oh, the PNW. Uh, Heady, down, bro. Down the PCH. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's a common term. Everyone, do you guys know what PNW stands for? I've would heard you, it. Would you have known? I've heard it once. I, right. I see it all over the place, man. Um, <laughs> All right, so Cam Jones asking any board bag recommendations. Um, I've got the Dekine Low Roller. It's worked really well for me. I've I've taken it all over the world, and it, it does all right. What board bag do you have? Uh, I've got the Dekine High Roller, and uh, yeah, it's great. It's good. Um, and I also have a Burton one, too, but I think the Burton one, the zippers broke, but I did use it quite a lot, I think like four years, but yeah. A board bag is like, there's not really like a ton of special things. Yeah, I think um, the biggest thing for me is just having wheels on the board bag and making sure that it's, you know, the right size. You can fit your boards in it. Yeah. And, um, yeah, the, the high roller and the low roller are very similar, but I think Kevin's got a little bit more space. Um, but I, I typically, the way, because I usually bring three boards on a trip, two to three, I usually max out the weight limit and the low roller. Mm-hmm. But if you wanted to like pack more outerwear, more clothes, some lighter things, you'd probably fit more in the high roller. Yeah. Sick. All right, guys. Well, uh, I think that that's going to be it for the live chat today. We just hit the one hour mark. I uh, appreciate all the, the great questions you guys had today. Um, yeah, Kevin, man, thanks for, for joining me on the chat here. Sweet, man. Yeah, it's good. And, um, yeah, so live chat on Sundays here on Board Archive. Hope to see you guys next week. And Kevin's got a live chat going on Thursdays over on Snowboard Pro Camp. Yep. Uh, Hit us up on Instagram at Board Archive at Snowboard Pro Camp. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys sometime soon. Thanks again for all the super chats. Really, really appreciate the support, everybody. And, um, yeah, see you guys in, in some videos this week. See you guys. Bye. Nice.